from earthquake testing in Motoakasaka, Japan, and materials testing at the University of Minnesota Duluth to planes, trains, and automobiles. This company is prevalent in our everyday lives. This company is an industry leader of providing performance test systems and sensor solutions, having a reputation for bringing to market the most innovative and technologically advanced products. This company is MTS Systems Corporation. Good evening, everyone. We are the University of Minnesota Duluth. My name is Andrew Bucknero. With me are Mr. Tony Peterson, Mr. Tom Noworiak, Ms. Sophia Carlstrom, and Mr. Patrick O'Neill. MTS Systems is excellent in everything that it does, but given current economic conditions, we believe that there's limited upside associated with the stock at this point in time. We are here, here to initiate a hold recommendation with a $57 price target implying 6% upside, including its current dividend yield of 2.2%, and here's why. Diversification with a global presence, competitive landscape, and financial transformation. First off, diversification with a global presence. MTS operates in two divisions. The first division is the test segment, which generates 80% of the company's total revenue. The test segment provides testing solutions to companies involved in infrastructure, energy, automotive, and aeronautics. Over half of the test segment's total orders is derived from the ground vehicle subsegment, in which MTS currently holds a market share of 27%. The remaining 20% of revenue is derived from the sensor segment. The sensor segment provides sensor solutions to companies involved in agriculture, oil, and gas. These sensor solutions provide automation, precision, and safety for its customers. Only 10% of machines in the world are smart machines, allowing a 90% opportunity for this segment to grow. With this wide variety of products, MTS is able to compete on a global scale. With 31% of revenue being derived out of Americas, 26% out of Europe, and 43% out of Asia, MTS does not rely on a single market. However, with global presence comes global risk. Foreign currency fluctuations have negatively impacted MTS due to the strong US dollar, which makes MTS lose orders to local currency competitors. In the first quarter of 2016, MTS lost $33 million in revenue, which negatively impacted EPS by 12%, and we believe that the U.S. dollar will remain strong in the near future. And in addition, MTS is experiencing slowing GDP growth rate in key markets, in particular in China. As stated before, 43% of revenue is generated in Asia, and China itself accounts for 23% of the company's total revenue. Due to recent economic uncertainties, we feel that it's crucial to analyze this region. And upon our analysis, we noticed that China's GDP has slowed from 10.6% in 2010 to 6.9% in 2015, along with PMI that has fallen from 53.9 to 49.4 since 2010, indicating a slowdown in the manufacturing sector. Despite the slowdown, China has experienced significant growth in their automotive industry. Since the economic downturn in 2009, China's automotive production has grown at an 11% cater, and this is important as MTS is heavily reliant on its ground vehicle subsegment. Due to its wide variety of end markets, MTS operates in a fragmented competitive landscape. We identified Ariba, Illinois Toolworks, and Moog as its top competitors. Although MTS is the smallest among these competitors, it has been able to generate a higher revenue kegger over the last five years. However, we have noticed that MTS's operating markets have contracted over the same period of time. In addition, we believe that this is partially due to MTS front-loading its investments for future sustainable growth. In addition, MTS has delivered value to shareholders to a competitive dividend for 39 consecutive years. Unlike its competition, MTS operates with zero long-term debt allowing the company to generate a higher ROIC than the rest of the competition. We believe that this is important because as of 2015, management's compensation is high to ROIC, demonstrating that the new management team's interest will continue to be aligned with shareholders' interests. MTS has faced changes in key management positions. CEO Dr. Jeffrey Graves in 2012 and CFO Mr. Jeffrey Oldham in 2014. This new management team is striving to lead the company in new and innovative directions, as far as capitalizing on increasing backlog and by expanding into the service segment, therefore leading the company through a financial transformation. The company's product mix has historically been comprised of 60% custom orders and 40% standard orders. As of this most recent quarter, product mix has unfavorably deviated to 77% custom orders and 23% standard orders. This is causing the company to be facing two negative repercussions. The first of that being decreasing backlog conversion rate. 
Since 2010, we have calculated the fat block conversion rate to decrease at a negative 2.9% per year. And this, in turn, is causing the company to face record high fat block levels. The second negative repercussion is an increase in accounts receivables, which over the same time period has increased by 20% per year. And this, coupled with the increasing fat block, is causing the company to be facing delayed revenue streams. And to capitalize on this fat block and to expand into the service segment, MTS has been investing heavily in its employee headcount by growing its engineers by 12% since 2012. The integration of these new engineers can take one to two years, but we believe that once the integration of these engineers is complete, MTS will be able to realize the benefits associated with their investments. So there's the story of MTS. From its background to its current financial position, we can see that there's opportunities and there are risks. Ultimately, we derive our whole recommendation through our valuation. Our valuation is primarily based off a discount cash flow analysis and is supported by, supported by a PE, EBITDA, EBITDA, and a Monte Carlo. Through our discount cash flow analysis, we derive a price target of $57 to initiate a hold on MTS systems. Through our discount cash flow analysis, we value MTS on a two-stage, two-segment growth model. In the first stage from 2016 to 2017, we are seeing stagnant growth. This is due to four key areas. Number one being currency headwinds. Number two being unfavorable product mix, which is ultimately leading to diminishing backlog conversion rate. We are not recognizing revenue today, but instead in the future. And in the sensor segment, we are seeing weakening industrial production in MTS's key end markets. However, we see turnarounds in our second stage. From 2018 to 2020, <coughs> we see currency tailwinds. As we uh, expect the US dollar to depreciate against the Chinese yuan and the euro starting in 2018. We also expect the elevated product mix to come back to historical norms. And in that same time period, grow the install base from 1 billion to 4.5 billion, leading for a tremendous opportunity in the service segment leading to our 4% growth rate in test. In sensors, we are recognizing an under-penetrated market, as currently only 10% of machines are smart machines, leading for a 90% opportunity, which we believe MTS will capitalize on through its mobile hydraulic sub-segment, leading to our 6% growth rate. We then combine the two revenue projections for each segment to get our total revenue for MTS systems from 2016 until 2020. We are recognizing a 3% CAGR. Through our valuation, we calculated an internal rate of return, primarily based on MTS's capital structure of 98% equity and 2% debt, which we then multiplied by our calculated cost of equity and cost of debt to arrive at a WAC of 9.6%. We then calculated our terminal growth rate by taking the weight of revenue generated in the respective regions in which MTS operates in, multiplied by the GDP growth rates in these regions to arrive at a terminal growth rate of 3%. To validate our DCF analysis, we use an EBITDA, EBITDA, a PE, and a Monte Carlo analysis. And as the price targets of these valuations line up with our DCF valuation, we are confident in our $57 price target and our hold recommendation. Through our valuation, we identified several risks. We then applied these risks to a risk matrix to assess its probability as well as its impact. This led us narrowed down to the main three. The first being foreign exchange. MTS operates on a global scale, meaning it's subject to foreign currency fluctuations as well as varying tax rates. The next is management change. MTS experienced key management changes in 2012 as well as 2014. Until they, until they achieve their operational goals, we see this as a risk moving forward. Lastly, competition. MTS operates on a fragmented market, meaning it must be a leading innovator in order to retain its customers. Investors. Since 1966, MTS Systems has been able to navigate the waters of both the good and the bad. The company's forward thinkers have helped shape the world into what it is today, and they will continue to do so moving forward. But given the current economic headwinds that the company is facing, as far as the strong US dollar and the global economic slowdown, we believe that there's limited upside associated with the stock at this point in time. We'd like to reiterate our whole recommendation with a $57 price target implying a 6% upside, including its 2.2% current dividend yield. We would like to thank the CFA Society of Minnesota for hosting us in this competition. We would also like to thank our industry mentors for assisting us along the way of this learning opportunity. We will now open for questions. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, you've got a financial modeling question. Uh, you have got a fairly uh, 
So we're all looking on uh, slowing economic growth. And uh, MTS has been able to grow revenues the last couple of years and margins have deteriorated. Yet um, in your model, you've got margins expanding from this point on. I'm just wondering what the key drivers are in that model for expansion of margins. Yes, uh, thank you for that question. So in the second stage of our model, in the test segment, we are seeing service growth as a major driver for margin expansion. We are also seeing the currency uh, depreciation of the dollar as another area in which MTS will start winning back some standard orders and will be able to deviate that product mix back to historical norms. Also, in the test segment, they hired a man by the name of David Saylor. He is a Lean Six Sigma black belt and he is uh, proven to be able to efficiently manage costs. In the sensor segment, as mentioned with the smart machines, those are MTS's states that that's their highest margin growth opportunity. And we see that moving forward with our smart machines growing at a 19.7 yearly from 2014 until 2019 based on BCC research. Looks a lot nice guys most. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, as you already mentioned, uh, MTS sees a high volume of revenue from ground vehicles, and we've seen just in the United States alone since 2010 a very significant increase in sales up to that 17, 18 million dollar number. Um, we can see that continuing to that plateau. How do you see uh, those options affecting the company? And what type of action can they take to uh, to weather that storm? <laughs> okay, so you mentioned on the the ground vehicle segment, and MTS is been recently getting into the motorsports as well, as far as um, they, do, they, they do dirt bikes, they'll do uh, Formula One testing as well. And what we have seen uh, globally, they, they see a high growth area in China, where China is producing vehicles uh, left and right. And as of uh, 2014, there's 123 production facilities for vehicles in China. And by 2017, they expect to grow about 14% as far as production facilities. Uh, when you look at it globally, uh, we have seen trends uh, with vehicle production and motor vehicle production uh, moving upwards as ever since 2007. Thank you. After your study of the company and understanding the strategy and financial structure, what advice would you give to management? Something they could do differently to create more opportunity for them and for their shareholders? I think one area that we recognize right away is that they don't take out any long-term debt. Instead, they have a credit facility agreement with J.P. Morgan, <clears throat> which they re up from 100 million to 200 million back in 2012. In this low interest rate environment, it is kind of our speculation that it might be prevalent for management to take advantage of these rates before uh, we see rate increases.
So you guys did a uh, sense of time, did a course by forces, and yeah, I was just curious as like later in the presentation, you highlighted that uh, it's a very intense environment, and I just want to make sure that coincided with what you um, those results from your course by forces, and also if you um, if that factored into your evaluation at all, and it, if so, kind of how it, how it, how did you did factor into that? Sure. So to touch on the Porter's Five Forces model itself, we saw industry competition and power of customers as the two biggest influences. Uh, to clarify on the competition, MTS operates in a variety of markets where a lot of their competitors operate in a niche market. So there are a lot of competitors for each respective market. And for the power of customers, um, as, the co as the company's product this is unfavorably deviated to 77% custom orders, this is why we believe the power of customers is a, bit, is a huge threat, as management has stated that they are willing to go out of the way and willing to tie up company resources to work with these uh, very important customers to establish, establish the long-term relationships. So as far as our valuation, this is moving into the second stage, and this is when we see the product may start to come down. Uh, your team was able to go out to uh, visit with company management in Iowa State. I'm wondering if you guys did any extra work that this to uh, past conference calls or anything. If you did, um, if you got a feel for uh, how management has done, whether they've been overly optimistic on their targets or whether they've been the ground still over the Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So after analyst day, we went out to found a supplier as well as a customer. One of the customers was at the University of Minnesota Duluth in the engineering department. Um, he has stated that MTS has contacted contacted them for services, whether it be liquid bubbles for their mobile hydraulics or whether it be servicing the machine. And then um, outside of the supplier, we we talked to an employee at Matrix Design Technology who works with the wiring at uh, MTS. He supplies it. They're, they're currently, MTS is currently 5% of Matrix Design uh, total revenue. So we don't really see the suppliers. Most of the suppliers is local, as what they stated in an analyst day. And as far as, oh, and that's what we have. Yeah, and to touch on that, with listening to earnings calls and kind of getting a sense for what management is feeling, we actually kind of do feel like they're a little bit over optimistic. This is due to an operational goal that they have to grow uh, service revenue by 30%, and currently we're operating at 14.5%, and it's been rel relatively stagnant. Um, this is due to them having to front load investments with uh, hiring. Another uh, operational goal, as we mentioned before, is their uh, EPS, EBIT, um, they weren't able to meet those goals as com uh, for their compensation. And they also use terms in their earnings calls as record high, uh, all-time highs. Uh, and the last one, you know, they talk about pipeline being at $955 million as record high, but their deferral rate went up 4%. So they, they, they give it a highlight, and then they kind of push something else under the rug. Um, so the stock closed at $54 today, and you have a $57 target. So why, why is it a hold? And, and, and I guess, is there a point that you would recommend that they buy? Uh, <clears throat> that's a great question. Um, with the recent volatility and the economic downturn that we've been seeing in the markets today, we're looking for a margin of safety of roughly between 12 and 15% because we're only getting 6% return on that, it's not quite meeting our recommendation to put it as a buy. Okay. If the market's wrong, what do you think, what do you think the market will be wrong? The company or positively or negatively, is it more important the top line? What will drive the shares? Is it the margin expansion idea or is it just valuation? Um, I think right now investors are a little bit weary as this is a very new management team. We have the CEO coming in 2012, we had the CFO come in 2014, and they're still trying to meet these operational goals. However, they have stated, and in their earnings call state, how much of a growth opportunity they see in their key end markets. Um, as a percent of global GDP with R&D, which MTS relies on heavily, uh, we've seen uh, expansion and in these areas. And due to that, we feel MTS is precise in the way that they're forecasting. However, we think it's going to take them longer to get to those revenue goals. Thank you.